George Jorgensen, Jr. Junior Snoonier, I still say it's Georgette. It's George! You want to make something of it, Buster? <laughs> In 1933, when I was seven years old, my birth certificate read George Jorgensen, Jr. There was still a great deal of life to be lived before I would be known as Christine. Swedish Carol, huh? I'll get some glue. Yeah, real glue. Danish glue. A recipe my father brought over from the old country. All right, but just have half an hour. Well, that's New York for you, son. No sooner does a building go up than, poof, Donna comes to make room for a bigger one. But I don't like building things, Dad. Well, sure you do. I put up buildings, don't I? Hey, a mighty fine business, George. Another couple of years, and you'll be building bigger houses than I ever did. I bet our dolls want some tea. That's a good idea. We could all have some together. The glug's ready, everybody. Oh, good. <laughs> Remember, I told you before, your sister has her toys, and you have yours. Look, you have so many lovely toys of your own. Come over. Take a look at your erector set. Why don't we build something? Your father will be so proud of you. Let's build a beautiful, big skyscraper. The best building, the most beautiful building in all the world. At that age, I couldn't understand the feminine impulses which made me desire a doll rather than my own toys. George. 
him first? Yes, sir. Ah, you hear that, Mother? George showed him. Son, you did exactly what any man would have done. Oh, you're gonna remember that black eye as one of the proudest moments of your whole life. But I got beat it up, Dad. But you wanted to fight. That's the important thing. Every boy's gotta know how to fight. Don't worry. You'll learn. Hey, we'd better get a picture of that black eye while it's still blooming. By the time the print gets back, your black eye'll be gone. It will? Yep. Everything changes except photographs and the things we remember. Now, don't go away. You said they called you a sissy, George? But they had no right to call me names. Football's too rough. Of course it is. <sighs> okay, George, come on in here. I've got the camera. Now, let's see. Uh, over there by the fireplace, huh? Now, let's see. Oh, stand up straight. Come on, wash rag down, nice big smile. <laughs> oh, that black eye's going to be an artistic triumph. Well, no more, George. The boys had enough. Now, Florence, you let the men in the family handle this thing. Isn't that right, son? Huh? Right. It's time you put on your clean clothes for dinner. Hurry it up. George. Now, Florence, don't start in on him again. He's going to be all right. Can't you tell that? He needs help. Maybe we should speak to the doctor. He's as healthy as I am. George. In school the other day, the teacher found a doll in his lunchbox. He'd been taking it with him every day, hiding it. The boy will outgrow it. He's already outgrowing it. D did you ever see him start a fight before? The child's different from other children. He always was. He's my son, and there's nothing wrong with me. He'll be every bit as good a man as his father is. George, you don't want to see what's happening to him. I wanted a son, Florence, and I got one. Nothing can change that. I don't need any doctor to tell me what he is. Sometimes there are mistakes we don't know about. He has the body of a man. There's been no mistake. Dad, my feels better. <laughs> hey, good. Hey, tell you what, why don't you get a picture of us this time, okay? Come on, son. Oh, oh, I look awful. No, you don't, Florence. Come on over here. All right. Now, look. All you have to do, son, is look through there, press that button and the red button. Okay, come on, Florence. Stand in here. Stand straight. It's a good thing I still have one good eye to look through here. Yep. Everything changes except photographs and the things you remember. My father was wrong. For me, there were no tomorrows that weren't filled with loneliness. My father's camera became my only friend. As I grew older, I began to understand how different I really was from other people. Later, I became a professional photographer in an advertising agency. Okay, boys, let's get the castle ready. Listen, Joe, uh, hit me with this light over here. Um, add a little, a little flood to soften her face. Uh, Jim, put a Mitchell B. Diffusion lens on the camera. Let's see, Tani, um, a shade more regal. Mm. Think of, of kings and queens and, and castles. How's this, George? Uh, sit up a little, a little straighter. Here, let me show you. Uh, this with with grace and elegance okay mm -hmm. now 
Frank. Look, you're a king. More regal. She's your queen. Tell me. That's it. Let's shoot it. Okay, that's it for tonight. Wrap it up. Oh. Hello, Jess. Do you like it? Perfect. You know, it takes a real artist to catch the mood of what an advertiser wants. Well, well thanks for the assignment. You know, I, I really appreciate it. Oh, hell. What are friends for? Oh, I already told the boss that you should get yourself a raise. You, you serious? There'll be an extra check for you this week. Enough for you to really live it up this weekend in Southampton. Southampton? Mm-hmm. I want you shooting this stuff for the Isle of Capri swimsuit account. But that's one of your top assignments. Mm-hmm. No problem. You can handle it. Oh, say, uh, how about celebrating with a drink? Hey, that'd be great, Jess. Oh, but I can't. My sister's getting married tomorrow. Church rehearsal tonight. People still getting married these days? <laughs> well, Dolly wants a lot of kids. Can't do that without a husband. <laughs> You're a lovely bride, Dolly. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor, could you stand behind Mom and Dad? Okay, Dolly Jack, just one more picture. Make it a good one. Something they can show their children. <laughs> like this? Well, kiss her. My camera's cooling off. You heard the man. Newlyweds, that's enough. And you can quit now. Do I ask you? On Dolly's wedding night, I was faced with a new and sudden torture. I was envious of Dolly's marriage, jealous that I couldn't be a woman as she was. Tani, uh, this time I want you to whirl around and give me plenty of flair with the cape, okay? Sure. Olive, you can be putting on lotion and, and give me some real sensuous movement. Loretta, your face has marvelous bone structure. Uh, listen, Joe, bring up the highlights in her cheekbones. No, 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 bring up the highlights. Yeah. There's no realism in this pose. It could just as well be somebody's backyard. Oh, just a minute. I keep trying to play down my high cheekbones, and that character wants to make me look like a sick Indian. Whew. Here. At least this will show that one of you is actually going swimming. Loretta, you put it on. Why me? Put it on. You'll look fine. Now, now, give me plenty of animation. You're thinking about going into the water, and you're protecting your hair. Protecting it? This rubber straitjacket is ruining it. It took me two hours to get it this Look, way. Look, we're not selling shampoo. We're selling Capri swimsuits. Well, who the hell's running this show? You or Jorgensen? Put the cap on if that's what George wants. Put it on. One thing I can't stand is a damn fag photographer. Oh, relax, Loretta. He's a nice guy. He's a queer. Leave him alone. They all hate women, honey, and it shows in every picture they take. Oh. That's it. All of over there. Let's shoot it. Toddy, now give me the world. Beautiful. A little more flair with the cape. Good. Okay, uh, uh, just a little more grace. One more whirl. 
Good. Loretta. Oh, Loretta. Okay, now smile. You're happy. Look where you smile. Your millionaire boyfriend is out on his yacht and you're waving to him. Hold it, that's sensational. Don't move. You're not photographing me with a goddamn chicken. You lost up a great shot. What are you afraid? The bird's gonna look better than you do? With her shooting it, yes. Everybody's tired, George, and we're losing our light anyway, so let's start again fresh in the morning, all right? Remember, Jorgensen, don't go using the ladies' room. You, bitch. Forget her, George. Dig her. Always lock yourself in like this. I, I, I just ran back and, and slammed the door. I'm sorry. Look, I know it hurt when that female scorpion stung you with her tail, but there's only one antidote, and that's a good stiff drink. We can both use some of that medicine. Thanks. No. Oh, come on. Relax, kid. Look, we'll make an evening out of it together, huh? We'll head for the Neptune bar. It's supposed to be the really the end place around here. What the hell is all of this? I'm going back to New York tonight. After what happened this afternoon, I'm, I'm afraid I don't belong on this assignment. You belong right here on your job, and that's exactly where you're staying. Look, if that broad ever dirty minds you again, I'll fire her. I don't want you to fire anyone for my sake. Well, fine, then let's forget the whole thing and go out and enjoy ourselves. Jess, it's too late. Well, you're not letting me down in the middle of an assignment. Jess, you've treated me right. But don't you see, if, if I stayed here, I'd... I'd only louse up your project. What about your career, your future? My future? George. You play ball with me, and I'll make you top boy around here. Uh, is that worth throwing away just because some fat-ass broad shot her mouth off? You're too sensitive, kid. You're so you're different. So what? I mean, everybody says everything about everybody anyway. And most of it's true. So what the hell? Just let it roll off here. What do you mean, most of it's true? <laughs> oh, cats are gay in the dark. Good God, you... You don't think I'm one of those? Come on, kids. You don't have to play it straight with me. Jess, you... You've got me all wrong. It's not to be ashamed of. Well, it's even legal in most civilized countries. You think of all your great men and artists in history are that way. Michelangelo, Tchaikovsky, Socrates, Shakespeare. What, you think Shakespeare wrote all those sonnets to a dame? <laughs> even Julius Caesar. Do you know what Suetonius wrote about him? He was every woman's man. And every man's woman. Jess, I'm your pal. Let's keep it that way, please. Other men have tried, Jess. And please, Jess, please. <laughs> What you mean about my career? Is this what you mean about my future? You didn't mean my future. You meant your own. Okay, you. you think you can walk out on me now? You took all the breaks I could give you? Job, a bonus? You thought you'd play me for a sucker? Well, it's the other way around.
George. George. If you're going fishing, I can cut bait. What are you doing here? Well, we're not all like Loretta, you know. Go back. Maybe it would help you to talk. Tony, stay out of it. Well, after all, we can't level with our parents. It isn't safe to confide in friends. Who else can we talk to? Except strangers. George. I've been at the end of my rope, too. We all get there, you know, even though we don't show it. Things are never what they seem. And what do they seem? Well, you can't tell me that they're any better down there than they are up here. I've heard of people jumping off of buildings and bridges because they had nothing to live for. But you've got talent. With a camera in your hand, you're as good as anybody. Better, maybe. You know the right things to say, don't you? No fishing? No fishing. I'm going back to New York tonight. Somebody else will have to finish this job. Well, what was it, Jess Evans? Didn't you know that he was gay? How could I? He, he, he puts never... on a good act. I like you, Jorgensen. Because when you cry in your beer, you do it where nobody else can see you. I wish you had a camera you didn't need. What for? So I could shove it down Jess's throat. Tanya, I want you to believe me. I'm not like Jess. I knew that when you came tearing out of that motel. It wasn't just Jess I was running away from. I was running away from myself, too. I think I've been doing that all my life. You know, when I was a kid in school, I, I remember reading a poem by, by Edgar Allan Poe from childhood's hour. I haven't been as others were. I haven't seen as others saw. I couldn't bring my, my passions from a common spring. The next few months were spent in the public libraries in a desperate search for my real identity. I was sure my problem was not homosexuality. But the endless research did nothing to help my mental anguish. Just as I was about to give up, I came across an entirely different theory. centuries we've been imprisoned by our ignorance and prejudice in the matter of sex today we endocrinologists are beginning to learn that a person's whole identity is determined by his glands his glands you you students take note sex is chemistry sex is chemistry this monkey proves it uh, now now hey, hey maggie you know we're not going to hurt you <coughs> Uh, what you are witnessing is abnormal behavior for a female. Here, here. 
Here, Maggie, this should win you over. Several months ago, Maggie's behavior pattern was that of a typical prepubescent female. Gentle, affectionate, submissive. Now, after being injected with male hormones, she has developed both the psychological traits and, to some extent, the physical aspects of a male. Her breasts remain undeveloped, the, uh, her muscles have grown bigger, the clitoris longer. Uh, as medical assistants, it will be your job to record all such changes. Tomorrow I'll demonstrate how such records are kept. See you then. Oh, we'll, we'll continue where we left off today. Come on, Maggie. Here. Yeah. Oh! Professor Estabrook, can I help? Well, Jorgensen, you still here? Here. Thank you. Now, can I help you? You already have, Professor. I, I read all your books and, and all your papers in the medical journals. You have? <laughs> I'm flattered. Young men who are studying to become medical assistants aren't usually so dedicated. Well, Professor, as a matter of fact, I'm a photographer. And so am I. It's one of my favorite hobbies. Now, shall we... Discuss cameras? Or what? Ever since I enrolled in your course, I've wanted to talk to you about your book, Sex and the Glands. <laughs> That's more than most of my colleagues are willing to do. Uh, always resistance against new theories. It's hard to believe that in this day and age, there are still people who think gland is a dirty word. <clears throat> Professor, I want to be completely honest with you. I came here to learn, to learn about myself. At a school? Well, wouldn't it be simpler to consult a physician? I did. I, I got nowhere. Oh, or a psychiatrist? I went to two of them. They couldn't help me. That's why I turned to your book. Are you trying to tell me you have a sexual problem? I've always felt that my instincts and, and, and all my impulses are, are female. So... Of course we can know nothing without a blood test. Roll up your sleeve. Within a week, we'll have a report back from the laboratory. Then we may have some indication of whether you're suffering from a fixed idea or a glandular abnormality. Did you have this problem before puberty? As far back as I can remember. sister's clothes. And my lipstick. They're Dolly's old clothes. She doesn't need them. Come here. You mustn't do this again. Please, not ever again. Why, Mom? Why shouldn't I? <laughs> because I say so. Now, look, we're going to get out of these clothes, get back into your own. Your father will be home soon, and I want you to be all ready for him and for dinner. Your school record shows that the GI Bill paid your tuition. I was drafted. Yet the Army gave you an honorable discharge. How can a man who thinks of himself as a female have gone through basic training? I learned to hide my emotions, Professor. I didn't go through basic training. I staggered through it. Ah! All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Move it. Move it out. Help! 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 Help!
Watch the back here. Let's go. What a double. Come on, eh? You look like you got molasses up your butt. Come on. What the hell is the matter with you? Report to the CEO. You're going to fight this war behind a desk. Oh, Jorgensen, I have some interesting results for you from that blood test we had made. The, uh, your estrogen level... Reads 96 rat units. Professor, what does that mean? Chemical imbalance. Your glands are secreting far more female hormones than male. Three times higher than ever expected in the normal man. Then I was right. It, it isn't just in my mind. No. It's in your glands in your blood, and probably in every cell of your body. You're... You're a woman trapped in the body of a man. Is there anything that can be done for me? In our country, no. But there is a doctor in Denmark who's been doing very advanced research in this field. You, you may find the answer to your problem there, but please, you must take the time to think about it. Professor, I've, I've had my whole life to think about it. Will you tell me the name of the doctor now, please? The man you would see is Dr. Victor Dahlman of the Serum Institute in Copenhagen. George, for Pete's sake, how long does it take to put on a tie? I've never seen this difficult before. Oh, oh, Good Lord, George. You're taking enough for a whole year. Well, Mom, you can't photograph all of Denmark in a week. God, uh, you got to have room for this? Little uh, going away present, something you can use. <laughs> With my finances, I can use anything. <laughs> Dad. A light meter like this costs a fortune. Well, if your book of photographs on Denmark didn't do it justice, no Jorgensen would ever talk to you again. <laughs> well, I promise you, Denmark will never look better. Ah, you see, Mother, I told you we'd be proud of our son someday. Oh, there's Jack with the car. I'll get it. You know, I, I really will miss all of you. Are you certain about all this? Are you sure that you want to go? Well, now, this is a fine time to ask that. Oh, but uh, a book of photographs... Who would buy a book like that? Mom, if, if ever Jorgensen in the world buys one, I'll, I'll be rich overnight. Mom, what is it? I don't know. I should be happy for you. Maybe it's because I, I don't know when you're going to be coming back. Mom, it's something I have to do. This book will give me importance. Mom, I have to be somebody. And all this time, I thought you were. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm glad you're going to be staying with Aunt Thora. At least you won't be lonely. Hey, come on, you two. Hurry up in here. You've all got to get out of here. We're going to be late. You hear that, Jack? He's trying to get rid of me. Son, I always knew the time would come when you'd have a chance to stand on your own two feet. Don't worry about the trunk. I'll make sure it gets there. If you miss that boat, George, you're going to have one long swim. This is one boat I'm not going to miss. <laughs> George, 
How do you like the land of your ancestors so far? Oh, it's wonderful, Aunt Thora. Why, well, I can almost picture Hans Christian Andersen coming out of any one of those doors. Well, the buildings are old, but we Danes are always young. Here. Yeah. <laughs> we have a saying. You will never grow old if you know you are going to dance at your own funeral. I even know the music I want. <laughs> and Thora, wouldn't it be simpler for you if I stayed at a hotel? My sister's son staying at a hotel? I have the guest room all ready for you. What good is a guest room without a guest? <laughs> isn't much, but a roof doesn't leak. The wind can't get in. You will like it here. And Thora, I think we'd better have a little talk first. Oh? But come in, George. George, don't you think you should have told your parents the truth? I didn't want to worry them. But I had to tell you, Aunt Thora. It just wouldn't have been fair. I know. And your parents don't. That is a big responsibility. And the book of photographs. That was a lie, too. No. That part's true. I have to make money to stay here. Of course you do. I, uh, I lost her 19 years ago. My daughter. My parents never told me you were married. I wasn't. Do I shock you? That's another thing your parents do not know. You keep my secret, and I will keep yours. Fair exchange. Oh, if she could talk the secret, she could tell. <laughs> you know what the first rule of successful dressmaking is? No. Dress every lady like a whore, and every whore like a lady. <laughs> I, uh, I think we get your luggage now, huh? Come. Please sit down. Thank you. Dr. Dalman will be with you in a moment. Mr. Jorgensen is waiting for you, doctor. I've seen your medical history. It's very complete. Estabrook's a good man. Too bad he wasn't allowed to help you. Denmark was a long way for you to come. A real hardship, I'm sure. I appreciate your research in this, Dr. Dahlman. Ah, it should have been done in your country, too. You Americans, you're advanced in so many ways. But when it comes to sex... <laughs> Childish. Operate on the brain. Perform a lobotomy. Fine. But take a pair of testicles, and everybody explodes. I want you to look at this. You read Danish? No, sir. Well, this application 
must be signed before anything can be done for you. Wait. Before you sign anything, I want you to know exactly what I would have to do to your body. Follow me. I want to confront you with the facts. Male, female. And this is where you are. The operation would be performed in three major steps. First step, an incision is made in your lower torso. Through this, the testicular tissue of the male hormone producing glands would be removed. Next step. We would perform a penectomy. It would be more than a complete castration. And now we come to the most complex and difficult part of the operation. Besides myself, it would require a urologist, a gynecologist, and a team of plastic surgeons. Here, we would create the vulva, the external part of the female sexual organs. Then, a vagina would be created in your body. If the operation is successful, you could have normal female sexual relations. Even uh, the bodily structure would change. Hips and breasts would develop through injections of female hormones. Even the bodily distribution of hair would change. And that is how you would remain for the rest of your life. There's no turning back. You understand, of course, that we have never performed this operation before. Our work has only been experimental. You would be a guinea pig. You realize that there's always a chance for failure. Your future might be at stake. My reputation might be at stake also. Well, do you still want to sign the application? Courage. You're going to need it. We're both going to need it. Making photographs for my proposed book filled my time while I was waiting to hear if my application would be accepted by the Serum Institute. After two weeks of waiting, I was notified that my application had been accepted and I was to enter the hospital the next day. I felt I would need all the help I could get.
Knife. You must have. Following the operation, I thought of that dream constantly. It could have only one meaning. George Jorgensen was gone forever. I was somebody else now. From a proud aunt to her niece. Aunt Thora, you've done so much already. Beautiful. L look inside. My daughter wore it. Long time ago. And Thora. Would you mind if I took the name of your daughter? It would be like having her with me again. For the next 18 months, I had to return to the hospital on a prescribed schedule for injections of female hormones under Dr. Dahlman's supervision. In time, the structure of my body and the secondary sexual characteristics began to change. The hips widened and the breasts became female in appearance. Each measurement was recorded photographically 
and add it to the growing statistical information in my medical file. Finally, Dr. Dahlman's work was finished, and I was ready to begin my new life. My aunt hoped to prepare the way for my new existence after leaving the hospital by having new clothes waiting for me. But the change of sex was not an easy mental transition for me to make. The image in the mirror seemed to be a stranger, a stranger whom I would have to learn to know and understand. Well, if I do say so myself, it fits you perfectly. So, now you will live, Christine. Oh, and let us have some schnapps, huh? To welcome my niece from the new world to the old world. Come. On this broadcast, you've heard everything that's happening from A to Z. But now, it seems, we'll have to invent a new kind of alphabet because this little tidbit won't fit into the one we had before. Listen to this. George Jorgensen, Jr., an American ex-GI, has just applied for a passport under the name of Christine Jorgensen. After being changed by Denmark surgeons from a man into a woman... All I can say is, these days, a fella never knows what he's going to get on a blind date. <laughs> hey, gang, you want to hear Christine's theme song? Now I'm a girl, just like the girl that married dear old dad. <laughs> I gotta tell you something. The other day, I ran into a friend of mine, and I noticed he's uh, walking kind of funny. You know, like... Your coffee's getting cold, George. Maybe you'd feel better if you went to work tomorrow. The men there are my friends. What can I say to them? Hi, oh, hello, darling. Passenger. Hello. I'm glad. You picked a bad time for a visit. Jack and I thought it was a good time. Don't expect one of my better sermons, George. It's hard enough to come up with a whopper on Sundays. <laughs> I've been doing my praying right here. It hasn't done any good. Some coffee, Pastor. Uh, thank you, Fudge. I'll help you, Mom. Thanks, Jack. If your new daughter is happy, you should be thankful. Remember, she's still the same person. Looking at you through the same eyes as before. Neither of us really know that, do we? Are you going to let the world end right in that chair? I've heard people talk like that when a loved one died, George. You haven't lost anyone. I had a son, Pastor. George was never a boy, Dad. You just wouldn't believe it. He was your brother. What, what is he now? It's always more difficult for men than for women to accept these problems. In all my years in the clergy, I've found this to be true with mentally retarded children cerebral palsy, and all of the other afflictions man has been plagued with. I wish I could feel the way you do, Pastor. George, will you come to church next Sunday? Can you change my son back to what he was? So that he can be the man you want him to be? instead of the woman he had to be? Let it ring, Anthora. It will just be some other newspaper or God knows what. 
Sooner or later, they will get tired. Hey, Organson, we want a story. Enough is enough. Get away from the door or I will call the police. Ah, we're wasting our time. Let's go. Well, maybe they don't believe we have police in this country. Let me take care of it, Aunt Thora. Perhaps you didn't hear my aunt the first time. I just got here. Would you mind repeating it once more for me? You're Christine Jorgensen. Well, those wire photos really didn't do you justice. Please, let me close this door. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait now. You want me to go all the way back to the United States just to tell my friend, Professor Estabrook, that you wouldn't even talk to me? Come in, please. Thank you. If a friend were coming here, Professor Estabrook would have written me. Okay. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm a pretty bad liar, Miss Jorgensen. Uh, I only met the professor once. But would it help if I say that Maggie, the professor's chimpanzee, sends her regards to? Who are you? I'm Tom Crawford. I'm a writer for Globe magazine. Now, when I interviewed the professor in his laboratory, he seemed to think I could do you some good. And Thora? So far, she has only heard from those who want to do themselves some good. Mr. Crawford, my aunt, Miss Peterson. Miss Peterson? I must tell you, Mr. Crawford, we do not look too kindly on newspaper people at the moment. Don't put all the blame on the press. When you submitted your medical file for a new passport, a clerk in the office made duplicate copies of your photographs and sold that information for $200. Not a very high price, is it? The damage has been done. Mr. Crawford, how could you possibly help Christine? Up till now, the papers have only printed their version of your story. Now, I'm not interested in that, nor is Globe magazine. Are you interested in telling your side of it? Or do you have something against the truth being printed? Would you believe the truth if you heard it, Mr. Crawford? Miss Jorgensen, may I tell you something? I came here with an open mind. Now, if you're going to start closing it, I can't help you. Believe me. You need someone on your side. It's so hard to know the ones to trust now. All right, I can't say that I blame you for that. The papers have really been rough on you. But if I wanted to do to you what they did, I didn't have to come all the way to Denmark to do it. It's starting again. Maybe you've got something to tell, or maybe you haven't. Let's just say we'd both be taking a chance. I really don't have much of a choice, do I? That thing, no peace, no peace at all. So long as they know where you are, they will never leave you alone. Over the next six weeks, with Tom staying at a nearby inn, my aunt's lakeside vacation cabin, became the one place where we could escape from the newspapers. Aren't you two even going to stop for lunch? Christine's been giving me so much food for thought lately, having a chance to get hungry. Well, maybe you'd better try something a little more substantial. <laughs> Everyone's written to me, except my father. You must be patient. It takes nine months for a child to be born. It may take him that long to get used to a new one.
cafe at my hotel. It's not bad. Would you like to have a drink? We can talk there. It doesn't make any difference, Tom. Why don't you tell me some of those things about your father that you avoided before? I've already heard him enough, Tom. Meaning there are some things you haven't even told him. Yes. Why didn't you try them out on me? I don't know. You still don't trust me. Is that it? I'm sorry, Tom. Yes, I trust you. I have to. But this isn't easy to tell anyone. It never seemed like anybody's business but my own. I tried to be everything my father wanted me to be. I tried everything I knew. I didn't have any choice. I wanted his love. You were a kid, and you wanted a father's pat on the head. Chapters one through five. Okay? But now we're up to chapter nine, the adult years. You're still waiting for that pat on the head? Maybe I am. I know that one of the proudest moments in his life was when I was accepted into the army. It wasn't quite that simple. that I can get for free. Oh! Yeah. Oh, give us some of that free stuff, huh? That could be giant! <laughs> okay, Jorgensen. You really lost yourself up in this outfit. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'll go with you. Well, come on! Come on, Georgie! Hello, baby. Well, come on. I ain't got all night for a ten spot. Have you got the ten bucks? Yeah. You, you, you don't have to do anything for it. <laughs> hey! Is this your first time? Want to smoke? <laughs> Don't you do anything? Well, beginner's luck, baby. You're in good hands. Just leave everything to Angela. Well, come on, boy. Don't you want something to brag about? So far, it's easy, eh? Nothing to it. Just like going to bed every night, only this time, you got company. And believe me, you won't hate yourself in the morning. It's no use. Hey, there are men and there are women, Sonny. There's a reason 
They're supposed to get together. Beginning to get the idea. Let yourself go, honey. You came in here a boy. You'll go out a man. And that's what every woman wants. A real man. No, don't. Hey, no guy's ever said no to Angela before, baby. Don't you understand? I, I just can't. Please. Just let me stay here for, for just a little while, so, so... So that the guys will... will think. <laughs> What'd you expect me to do? Hold your hand and holler, help, you're hurting me? <laughs> Holy mother, is that the kind of army we got now? <laughs> how, how are we ever going to win the war? <laughs> really wasn't that funny. Was it? I suppose if it comes under the heading of truth. Put it in the articles if you want to, Tom. And you can still smile. I'd like to write about that, too. And Thor will be wondering what happened to us. We'd better get back to lunch. type of dress? I think it looks great. The magazine wanted something with a little sophistication and a natural setting for the front cover. Now let's see. Hey, right here where the sunlight's coming through the branches. That's great. That's great. Let the public see you smile. That's nice. You really look beautiful. Now, for a little more human interest. Hey, how about a shot with you and your aunt together? Oh, me? I stopped being interesting years ago. Not to us. Come on, Aunt Dora. How's this? That's perfect. Hold it. Oh, but just wait. Uh, would you mind if an amateur makes a suggestion? I would like a picture of the two of you. Uh, for my photograph album. I have no objections. Good. Give me the camera over here. All right, there, that's fine. Closer. Closer, I can't get you both in the picture. Hold still now. Huh. Now, uh, let's have... That's the... enough for today, Aunt Thora. Apparently, you had some objection to that last picture. I'm sorry, Tom. We've become very good friends. I... I like being with you, but... But I'm only supposed to write about you. Not think about you. Christine. 
Christine. Help him with the flowers, will you, dear? Uh, the vase is over there. When are you going to give Tom a set of the photographs? He doesn't need them for his articles yet. Is that why he has not been here the last few days? He has all of his notes. I, I felt he could concentrate much, much better at his place. Oh? I thought you two were working so well together. It's better this way. Does Tom think so? And Thora, Tom has a job to do. That's all. Oh, must be my eyesight is getting bad. I could have sworn I saw more than that. I must get new glasses. Tom has his life and, and I have mine. What is yours? Child, you have a right to love a man. I am going back to Copenhagen this afternoon. Christine, this is a decision you must make for yourself. Remember, never throw away a chance for happiness too quickly. It can get to be a habit. I was just about to go to sleep. Yeah, I'm sorry to come at such a late hour, but... Well, for a writer, I'm not doing very much writing these days. Well, I, I had to decide a lot of things by myself. Too much time has passed, Chris. 
The magazine can't wait any longer. Tom, I don't want to finish the articles. Oh. Well, that news doesn't surprise me. I should have never let you begin them in the first place. It, it was a mistake. Then where does your story end, Chris? The articles might only make things worse. I don't want to hurt my family anymore. It has to be this way, Tom. Don't you understand? Everything ends here. I'm not going back to the United States. Well, hiding here isn't going to win you any friends. Tom, please go back to New York without me. You're not afraid of facing your family. You're afraid of becoming involved. I can't mean anything to you. Or anyone else. Are you going to spend your whole life being afraid of the dark? If I have to? Yes. Tom, the dark is either empty or... or full of things we can't see. That's right, Christine. Stay where it's nice and safe. Where you don't have to take any chances. Listen to me. Do you think it's so impossible for me to love you? I'm sorry, Tom. I didn't want this to happen to either of us. Why? Don't you believe you're a woman? Does it make any difference what I believe? Are you going to stop reading the newspapers? Are you going to stop listening to the radio? Or watching television? Will they ever stop making jokes? They'll never stop laughing. Tom, it would destroy you, and it would destroy me. You think I haven't thought about that? We shouldn't expect it to be easy. We're grown up, Chris. We're not kids. Tom, I think it's best that you leave right now. All my life, I've... I've had to love something. A doll or... A, a camera. Tom, I need your love. But now it's... It's not possible. Things are going to be what you make them. Chris, stop being afraid. In the spring of 1953, Christine Jorgensen returned to the United States, and I accompanied her. The derision of an unfriendly public was waiting. Christine, how about a statement? What are your plans for the future? Come on, Christine, smile pretty. The GIs need new pinup pictures. <laughs> hey, Christine, is it true you're going to re-enlist in the wax? <laughs> What's the matter? Aren't you going to talk? The only happy note was in the unexpected appearance of Christine's family. Darling, are the men in Denmark just as broad-minded about sex as the doctors? You'll have to find that out someplace else. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to tell us anything. Hey, Mr. Jorgensen, how does it feel having a daughter instead of a son? 
Yeah, she got a man. Why don't you ask her how she did it? Boys, what about that? You want a new woman? You can always order one from Copenhagen. <laughs> Prejudice against a clinical approach to sex problems made it impossible for the public to accept what Christine and science had accomplished. <laughs> it took 13 years for the laughter to end. On November 21st, 1966, the New York Times printed a startling statement. Thousands of human beings afflicted as Christine Jorgensen was have been given a normal existence through surgery. I had written the end of Christine's story many years before, but now for her, this was the beginning.